Welcome YouTube. How's everybody doing? Uh, my name is Greg and we're going to do some hardest math problems. We're starting grade 7. This is the first part of grade 7 of the show you work section. Um, I've done this for all grades uh, for multiple choice. I've done it from grade 3 to grade uh, 6 so far for um, show you work. Uh, what we're doing is we're exploring numeracy your math proficiency, no hesitation math, your math fluidity. And we're also going to look at this from the notion of concepts and topics, not particularly from questions. Uh, yes, you need to know how to solve a question, but and, and, and you need to absolutely do that, but we want to back off of it a little and kind of figure out what is the concept that the, that the person who wrote this question is really trying to ask us to get at, okay? And at that, we're also going to explore alternate solutions. Um, I'm sourcing these from the New York State exams for the past decade or whatever. Um, and what I'm doing is picking out of it the problems that most students got wrong. Okay, And that's how I'm defining hardest math, at least to this extent. Um, it turns out in the show you, you work section of these exams that most students got most of them wrong. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of students here. All right, so... Uh, for some reason, uh, these students got these uh, problems wrong. And it may not be always strictly mathematical reasons. They may be reading the problem wrong. They might be in a bad middle school. Um, a whole bunch of scenarios here. Um, so at that, even though I'm talking about grade 7, uh, and we're talking about Common Core, really, uh, there's overlap between standards. There's overlap between schools. There's over overlap between states. Uh, this really applies to anybody. Uh, taking this so-called grade seven, seven level common core math, um, whatever that happens to mean, we're talking about some general concepts. Uh, we're going to see some of them here, but like, um, you know, we're not doing addition here. It's grade seven. We're not doing calculus either. On the other extreme, it's grade seven. So that's kind of where we need to go here. Um, if you find these too easy, then you have to wait for me to get to the grade 8 one or wait for me to get to the next exam, okay? If you find them too hard, you may want to go to the grade 6 ones and review those first, right? Because this is thing, you're a certain age and a certain grade, and that's not how learning particularly works, even though in the real world, that's how we separate it. On the same note, um, if you're in grade 7 and you're eager to see more, go to the multiple choice questions that I have. Again, the link is gregstutoringnyc.com slash hottest dash math. I'm Greg from gregstutoringnyc at gmail.com. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, that's probably the summary to start this section of the series. I kind of give it a new every time I start a new grade. Um, and uh, you catch us on the replay. Uh, hit pause. Try to solve the problem yourself and then see what I do to do it. Um, I may not show it the same way you use it. I might talk about other aspects. What I like to do as we're exploring the problem is talk about it, uh, rip it to shreds, and then reconstruct it in the solution, and also give alternate solutions, all right? So with that in mind, let's jump right into it. Okay, let me get rid of this. Uh, let me pop that there. Okay, here we go. All right, so that's the first problem. Uh, let me make sure my tablet's going okay. Yeah, there we go. All right, so the first problem is a word problem. Uh, we have a convenience store that sells two brands of orange juice. Cool. There's nothing really too mathy in that first thing there. Brand A contains eight ounces, eight fluid ounces, and costs $1.28. What are we talking about? The brands of orange juice. Okay, so you, for eight ounces, you pay a dollar twenty-eight. Brand B. Uh, those units contain twelve ounces, and they cost a dollar sixty-eight. Okay, so we're up to here at this point. All right, so we have two different brands of orange juice. Uh, there are different capacities, and there are different amounts of money. Okay, let me just fix this six here. And let me just double check them. I have slight dyslexia as well as some other related issues. So I don't always see numbers as they appear. 
Uh, so let's see, eight for a dollar twenty-eight, and twelve for a dollar sixty-eight. Let me just fix that one second, because even though I tried to fix the six, it looks like an eight now. And I want you guys to be clear uh, what we're working with here. Okay, uh, what is the difference in cost? So this is coded language for subtraction in dollars. So we're going to shoot for dollars as our answer. Okay, answer is in dollars per fluid ounce okay so that's a hint for this there we always go check the units to try to kind of get a heads up what's the target what are we looking for what are they asking us right it's important not to answer a different question um so what is the difference what is the difference in the cost in dollars per fluid ounce between the two brands so i'm going to change the color of the pen for a second to point out what we're looking for because if you don't grok this and you it kind of doesn't smack you in the face. It's the cost per fluid ounce. That's what I just circled and pointed out here. The cost, the dollar amount per fluid ounce. Okay? So the first gotcha for this problem for many students is that it was laid out in fluid ounces and cost. So it was easy for me to write these ratios in this way. But they want it. So I did it in ounces per cost. Okay, this is also in ounces per cost. Okay, but they wanted a cost per ounces. They wanted upside down. They wanted a cost per ounces. Okay, so in other words, they wanted as a dollar twenty-eight is to eight, and then for this one, it's the same way. Cost is to ounces. So this is going to be. Um, a dollar sixty-eight is to uh, twelve. Okay, all right. So what we just need to do then is compute that value for a, and then compute that value for b. Well, a is eight goes into one point two five uh, to eight. So we get eight goes into one zero. We bring the decimal point up. Eight goes into twelve once with four left over. Right, that was an eight. And it goes into 48 six times. So at this grade level, it's imperative that you know your multiplication tables. Okay, so this is 16 cents per fluid ounce. This is called a rate. In fact, it's called the unit rate. And for brand A, this is constant. It means it doesn't change. So this is called a constant of proportionality. So because in the case of A, it's 16 cents or 0.16 of a dollar per ounce, then from there we can always do it. So in other words, 10 ounces is going to be a dollar sixty, right? Eleven ounces is going to be eleven times point one six, whatever that is. A hundred ounces, right, is going to be sixteen dollars. So that's why it's the constant and it's in proportion. We can even set that up as a proportion. If point one six dollars is to one ounce, then If I have 100 ounces, then what do I get up there? That's what I did. I took the original rate, which is a ratio, rate, ratio, the unit rate, that's what that is. Okay? And we're trying to figure out what this is. If we do the cross product or however you want to do it, we end up with $16 for this example. Okay? So that's why it's called the constant of proportionality. And it's a unit rate. So we're going to now figure out the unit, so we figured out the unit rate for orange juice A, and now we're going to figure out the unit rate for orange juice B. Let me just change the color so it's clear we're distinguishing which, which from which. So we're going to divide 12 into the 1.68. Okay. 12. Uh, so just to be clear, the answer is not 16 so far. Uh, we're going to divide 12 into 1. Can't do it. Bring up the decimal point. 12 on the 16 one time, right, with 4 left over, 
12 into 48, 14 times. So this is that. Okay, and always double check your answers. Uh, we can come over here. We got 0.16. We're going to multiply it back by 8. 6 times 8 is 48. Carry the 4. 8 times that gives 12. We add 2 to the best of the places here. We get a dollar twenty-eight. That was the original number there. We can do the same thing here. We have 0.14 times 12. Uh, I wrote that sloppy. 0.14 times 12. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 1 is wheat. We get um, 8, 6, 1. We had 2 to the decimal places there. There's none for the 12. So you move 2 here. We get that number back, okay? So 14 is also not the answer. It says, what is the difference? So now what we have to do is subtract from the 16 the 14, okay? And we don't get 2 and we don't get 0 0.2. We get 0 0.02, right? If we line them up, 4 from 6 is 2, 1 from 1 is 0, the decimal point drops down. We don't necessarily need that leading 0, but we can put it down because the values are the same. Okay. Uh, if you did it in reverse, and you did it this way, you would have gotten minus 0 0.02. Okay. Right? So they want to know the difference in dollars. Right? So it's clear they're talking about the absolute value of this number. Right? They want the difference in, you know, a positive number, okay? Uh, yes, money, you can owe somebody money and stuff, but that's not what's happening. What's, what's the, the the magnitude of the difference between the two amounts, right? If I said I had $1 in, in one hand and $2 in the other hand, you wouldn't say I have minus $1. The difference is 2 minus 1 is 1, right? So we're always going to take the absolute value of concepts like this. Unless the context of the question is a little different, and it requires us to do something else, okay? Um, <clears throat> so that's pretty much where we're going with this question. Um, hmm, you know what? How did I even end up with that question? Uh, for some reason, I skipped a question here. All right, that's weird. Okay. Um, anyway, so the concept of this is the constant of proportionality. It involved multiplication, um, it involved division, it involved this unit rate as well. Okay? The rate is the ounces per dollars, or in the case where we actually solved it, the price over the ounces. Okay? That was our unit rate. When you go into the supermarket and you see a price for something, okay? And it might be like a box of cereal. It might say like uh, four four dollars for the box of cereal. Usually over here it says the unit price, and it might say OZ at the bottom for ounces. That's where you're going to see something like the sixteen right there. Okay, and that's how when you get it. So if you had a, a box of cereal that was twelve ounces for four dollars, okay, and another one that was sixteen ounces for five dollars. That's how you figure out which one is the better price. You do this kind of division here, and you get the unit price per ounce. And whichever is lower is the best price. Okay? Yeah, that's how we do it, right? Okay, and it may not, and it depends on what it is. It could be gallons. It could be a uh, number of packages. You could get uh, a bunch of juice boxes for $4, like 20 juice boxes for $4, or toilet paper. Well, the paper is a really thing. You can sometimes get a pack of eight, a pack of 12, and the price could look good, but how do you prove it's good? You do this division. You do this, and you figure out what the constant of proportion is. Okay, the constant of proportionality. All right, so that's 57. Um, interesting for anybody following this is taking the SAT. Uh, this kind of question, this kind of notion, the unit rate and the constant of proportionality, it popped up on the SAT a lot last year. And so many students were surprised. And here's a, a New York State test that this is on. So this is not um, this uh, really unknown topic or, or anything like that. Okay, this is this is par for the course. Um, actually, while I'm on this, um, let me see. I think there is another one. Um, 
that deals with the unit rate. So what I might do is combine those, these two questions and spin this off as its own uh, part one, and I'll do the rest as part two. Yeah, it's this one. Okay, uh, so let's let's do this one next then. And then I'll end the stream and I'll, I'll start otherwise. Uh, by the way, anybody who's first joining me for the uh, grade seven, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. There's more of these coming. Uh, the more I help you, the more you help me, and the more you help me, and the more I help you. Right? This is a reciprocity that can go on there. Um, these normally run about an hour. This one, I think, had less questions in total anyway. So we're running right now 15 minutes. This is taking to take another 10 minutes to go over. So this is going to be 25 minutes. And the other part of this, I think there's only three questions at that point. It may be four. Might take that. That said, I explore many options. So, but roughly the, each exam I go over it is going to take about an hour. Okay. All right. Uh, please like and subscribe. Please email me at the bottom. Um, all right. So let's jump into this question. Uh, what I like to do is look at illustrations first. So I have something. It's about the number of cards. It's a count and the price for the number of cards. And the whole thing is about the cost of cards. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of inspect each row to try to see if I can make sense out of it. Now, part of the problem with trying to make sense out of this is I haven't read the words here or the read, read the words here. What I'm just trying to do is give myself a fast heads up without exploring so deep that I'm exploring stuff that I might not be asked about. Okay, um, But I'm at least going to, sometimes we can add stuff up. Um, in other words, maybe we should total this. I don't know. So if there's enough numbers there, then I'm not going to do it. Maybe we should total all the prices here. Those are weird enough numbers that I don't want to spend the time yet to do that. But what I could do is roughly total them. I have 65, 40, that's 100, uh, plus another 30, that's 130. So it's about 145 here. I could do this here too. That's 200, so I can give this real quick. That's 220, all right? Now, it may not ask me any about this, and it may not ask me about that. So there's a line of no return in your exploration. So in any event, I at least want to look at the captions and maybe one line to see what's going on, okay? Often in a table, though, there's a pattern. Okay, I don't know if they want me to figure that out or not, okay? So I'm going to put this in parens. So I'm just giving you guys heads up for things to look for. Um, if you don't look for it now with this or original look at the illustration, then definitely look at it when you get to the words, because these these things I'm telling you about are little hints about how to process the question. Remember the the word it might be a word problem, but the illustration is there for some purpose. All right. So let's go to the words now. The table below shows the prices of different numbers of cards on a website. Okay, cool. So that kind of confirms what I thought it was. Okay, for each order. The website applies a 7.7% .7 sales tax to the price of the cards plus a one-time fee of $5.95. Based on the info in the table, what will be the cost of 280 cards? So we're looking for the cost. So the answer should be in dollars. Okay. So again, we're looking for a dollar amount. Um, so what we need to do is figure out, um, what is the cost of 280 cards, first of all, okay? So, okay, then when we do that, um, we have to apply the sales tax. And then when we do that, we need to add the one-time fee. Right? Does that make sense? Read it over. For each order, there will be 7.7% .7 sales tax on the price of the cards. Okay? So you, ha you can't apply the sales tax until you figure out the cost. So that's going to be that. And then, and plus a one-time fee. So... Um, the one-time fee is of no use unless we have um, the value of the cards with the sales tax added on. Okay? So in algebra, if you will, 
it's going to be the cost of the cards uh, times 7.7%. Added to it, additional 7.7 .7 plus the 5, that 95, okay? So some of this gets tricky at this point. How to do the percent, what the value should be there, things like that, okay? So now we actually do have to go back to the table and inspect it and try to make sense out of it. So it said 280 cards. It seems to me that if I do, this is the price of 100 cards is 65, so it seems to me we're going to need 65 for 100, 65 for another 100, so that's 200. And then we need 26 and 26 for 240s, okay? Because that'll give me 280 at that point. So that means the price of 280, right, should be, uh, we got 12, uh, 2, 2, 2, 4, 6, 18, it should be 182. Um, before I double, I'm going to double check that. Um, what I want to do is make sure I got that. I'm looking for 280. Uh, let me change the color of the pen for a second so we're, we're clear where I'm at. So we have 280 cards. Okay. Um, this was for 100. This was for 100. This was for 40. And this was for 40. So just let me see if my total is right. Um, let me add another way. This 130 plus 52 is 182. So this 182 checks out. So that this is number one. This is the cost of 280 cards. Okay. Um, what's unclear to me is um, could I have done this another way? All right. Is there another way to get 280 cards? right why maybe these are unit prices as well where the price for 100 cards per card is different than the price of 20 cards for 13 dollars so let's try to see if we can make sense out of that okay so let me change the color of that for one second i just want to make sure that that the price the 182 it's that it's going to make sense okay so 280, um, I noticed that 4 goes into 28. So 40, or it's 280 divided by 40, that cancels out. That's equal to 7. So that means if I do 26, the number here, times 7, I'm supposed to get 182. So 6 times 7 is 42. Carry on my 4. I got 7 times 2 is 14 plus 4. Yep, I got 182. So what I'm hitting on here is this is another constant of proportionality question. This table here all makes sense. It all makes sense. Right? In fact, um, if... If there was to be 10 cards, then I know that it's half, right? Since since they're all in ratio, in other words, it's, it's 20 to 13 is the same as 40 is to 26. We can see that. We multiply the numerator and denominator uh, by 2. And we can do it, say, for the last one, 100 is to 65. This is times 5. That's times 5. So everything, and if we do this for all of them, even the 61, this is going to be times 3 from here to here. So this is times 3 from here to here. So there's a ratio going on between every single uh, line row here versus any other row. All right? So that's cool. That's awesome. Uh, what we could have also done, and I'm going to change the color one more time again. We're just emphasizing and kind of proving uh, that that some of this kind of works out. I'm going to change this to black. Um, if we focus on the last line, 100 is for 65. Okay? So it costs $65 for 100 of them. Okay? This means 0 0.65. 
we just moved the decimal place over twice. So it's 65 cents per card. Okay, that means if we just use that last line to determine that, if we take 280 times this 0.65, we can get the unit price for that as well. <clears throat> so five times zero is zero. Eight times five is 40, zero. Carry my four, okay. Um, five times two is 10, plus that is 14. Okay, six times zero is zero. Uh, 6 times 8 is 48. Carry my 4 again. 6 times 2 is 12. That gives me 6. Okay. I'm going to add these up now. Uh, 0 and nothing is 0. 0 and 0 is 0. 8 times 4 is 12. 2. Carry my 1, 6, 7, 8. 182. There's no decimals here. I moved over 1, 2 here. I move over 1, 2 here. And I get 182. Booyah. Okay, so what I'm showing you is the multiple ways to view this and figure this out. So, so far, we're only, we're only up to point number one in all these choices here. So, finally, we have 182 cards. Um, and let me change the color one more time. So, just to be demonstrative, that we proved in a variety of ways um, that there's 182 cards. So, now what we need to do is figure out the sales tax thing. Now, 7.7%, okay, any percent means itself over 100. So 7.7% is the same as 7.7 .7 over 100, okay? And if we wrote that as a decimal, that's 0 0.077, right? Right? Everybody cool with that? We moved the decimal over one twice. So that's 0 0.077, okay? This is additional tax on top of the whole thing. That, so what we can do is uh, run the 182 times 0 0.77 and add it back, or we can say that it is 100% of the original price plus the 0.77, and 100% is 1. It's 100 over 100, which is 1, right? So that means what... What our factor is, is 1.077, okay? So what we're going to do is take the 1.077, multiply that by the 182, okay? And that should give us our, our total that we paid the 182 times the 0 0.177 thing, and then we still need, don't forget, we still need to do part three, which is to add the 595 onto it. All right, so this is ugly for sure. Okay, um, let me just see uh, that I have the numbers right here. So that I didn't copy any number wrong. Um, this is a good thing to do. Again, I have dyslexia, but you guys should uh, do this anyway. It's a good double check. Uh, looks good to me, unless I miss something obvious. Uh, 7 times 2 is 14. Carry the 1. 7 times 2 is 14. 5. Carry the 1. 2 times 0 is that. And I'm left with 1. And then 2. Okay. 8 times 7 is 56. That's a 5. Uh, 8 times 7 is 56, plus 5 is 61, 6. 8 times 0 is 0, plus the 6, that's 6. Then I get the 8, and then all we have to do is copy, so we get 7, 7, 0, 1. I'm going to bring this up slightly, because we don't really need that first line anymore, so we can do this. Uh, that was a 0, so we get 4. One, one, zero, one, fourteen, sixteen, one, nine. That we have three decimal places here, so we're going to move this over one, two, three. Okay, and we get a hundred ninety-six dollars, right? 
and if we round it and one cent, okay. Okay, we can throw that far away because it's in dollars and cents. So now we finally need to add the step number three, which is the 595. That's six, that's nine, that's, uh, whoops, uh, that's one, that's one, that's zero, that's what, that, so we get uh, 20196. Okay, that's a lot of computations to do. I believe where I pulled this from, you were allowed to use a calculator. Uh, let me see here. Yep, on this one, that last line there says guys get is allowed. Uh, we did it the hard way, uh, which is good. It's good, good practice. Uh, so this was demonstrating our use of multiplication, um, making sure we tuned in that the padded involved the constant, and therefore this is a unit rate again, similar to the other question. And in particular, mathematically, it's a constant of proportionality, okay? Um, this involved multiple steps, it involved multiplication, um, and uh, yeah, there, there we go. So constant of proportionality rules, yeah. All right, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this, uh, pop this out, and then do another part B uh, with the remaining questions. Peace. Like, subscribe, right? Bye.